Every spring, purple martins fly over 10,000 kilometers from Brazil to nesting grounds along the Pacific coast, from California to British Columbia. Oh yeah, these are a good size for banding. This will work quite nicely. But by 1949, the swallows had all but disappeared from the lower mainland, and there were only about five breeding pairs remaining on Vancouver Island by 1985, due to loss of their natural habitat in the coastal lowlands. Purple martin is North America's largest swallow. Uh, there's two subspecies, eastern and western. The eastern is quite abundant, living entirely in artificial housing. The western is uh, rare uh, and uh, at risk. 9908 is empty. This husband and wife team spent countless hours climbing ladders at marine coastal areas around the Strait of Georgia, checking hundreds of nest boxes throughout July and August for fledglings. So they nest in the, in the woodpecker cavities and snags. Uh, as that habitat went away, they moved into offshore wooden, untreated uh, wooden pilings that were used extensively throughout the Strait of Georgia in Puget Sound in the early 1900s, late 1800s. Yeah. Uh, those pilings had flicker cavities and they nested in those cavities. As those pilings rotted away and were replaced with creosote treated pilings, there were no more cavities. The cavity supply declined and so did the population. A recovery program was introduced on the island. A few nesting boxes were put up at Cowichan Bay, Esquimalt and a couple of other locations and the Martins moved in. There are now, between Vancouver Island and the Lower Mainland, there are in excess of 1,500 nest boxes. As of this year, there are about 1,050, 1,060 nesting pairs. On Vancouver Island, over 100 people help with the Western Purple Martin recovery effort, a program that needs support all year long, from building the nest boxes, maintaining them, counting the birds, and banding the fledglings. Use two bands, one is a aluminum, silver-colored, official federal ID band, which has their official ID number on it, nine-digit code. The other is a colored band, unique to the program and the year, with a three-digit plus letter code on it that we can read with a spotting scope, so we don't have to recapture the birds to identify them. Information collected helps biologists understand the parameters that control the population, how it grows, and also what causes its decline. So we can track movement because they're banded as nestlings. We know how old they are, we know what their age is, so we can do population dynamic studies. Since martins feed solely on flying insects, they are extremely vulnerable to weather conditions that affect insect availability. Prolonged bad weather such as rain, cool temperatures, and even heavy winds all reduce or eliminate insect flight. If poor weather persists for more than two or three days, martins begin to die of starvation. 114 is empty. The recovery program has helped the Purple Martins regain all of their historic territory except part of the Fraser Valley. And they have extended their range beyond Campbell River, nesting in the Broughton Archipelago off Johnstone Strait, and for the first time on the west coast at Bamfield. It's very satisfying to know that we have a, a base population back now that can withstand some losses due to weather impacts and, and recover quickly, which it has done. BC is the only region of the West Coast population that does not have birds nesting in the wild, a goal of the Purple Martin Recovery Program. In Ladysmith, I'm Annette Lucas.